Hello everybody, this is Ms. Peachy from WCA Physics. We are doing Unit 4, Lesson 3 on Hooke's Law today. Um, so we are going to first go over the vocab. Our keywords are applied force, displacement, elastic, equilibrium, linear, restoring force, and spring constant. All right, so this whole lesson is basically about springs, um, about how springs can you know, they're unique in how you apply forces to them and how they also then can apply forces um, kind of right back at you, really. So when you compress a spring, it causes um, basically a buildup of potential energy. And when that spring releases, it releases that and can apply a force. And that force restores the spring into its original shape, essentially. So we can measure the displacement of the spring. That's the difference between where it began and where it was compressed or stretched to. So in this picture here, you can see they're compressing a spring. This is the original shape of the spring. And when he squishes it, it gets shorter. So the difference between the height here and the height here, like this difference, would be like our displacement. That's how much we're displacing the spring, right? If he were to let go, it would bounce right back into its original shape. Um, restoring that state of equilibrium for the most part. I know we know that springs can be overstretched and then, you know, they lose some of that, that spring elasticity to them. So that is an exception to the rule. We're just going to be kind of looking at, you know, what normally would happen. So that force of squishing the spring, we call that the applied force because that's the force that you are applying to the spring. When you let go, the spring applies a force, restoring itself to its original position. So we call that the restoring force. That is the force that is applied by the spring itself. And again, that restores it to a state of equilibrium. The restoring force is oftentimes called the spring force because the springs what's applying it. Um, not all springs are created equal, right? So some springs are going to be more difficult to stretch or compress than others. And so we have a factor known as the spring constant. And the spring constant is like how difficult it is to stretch or compress a spring. It is a measure of the innate stiffness of that spring. So the higher the spring constant, the more difficult that spring is to stretch or compress. So we have a, a law that is um, a formula that actually measures this relationship. So we have that the spring force, which is the restoring force, right, is equal to negative K, and K represents the spring constant here, times X, and X is the displacement of that spring. So what we see here is that um, you have to factor in that stiffness of the spring when you're figuring out what that restoring force is going to be. Hooke also sum summarized his law, I think this is important, by saying, as the extension, so the force meaning the displacement and restoring force have a linear relationship with each other. In other words, the greater the extension, the greater the restoring force, right? So if you extend that spring more so, you'll have to have a greater restoring force. Kind of makes sense in a way because if I, the more I extend that spring, the greater force I'm applying to it as well, right? So if I'm, if I'm applying a greater force, then the restoring force is proportionately greater as well. So let's look at another example of this on the next page. Here we see a picture of five hanging springs. The first one has nothing applied to it at all. That is the spring in its resting state. In this case, we're not squishing a spring or compressing it. We are actually stretching it, or what we call extending that spring, right? And so what we do is we measure the displacement based on the resting position, um, which is over to the left here, and how much that has moved. So we look at the bottom of the link here, and then the difference between where it was before and where it is now tells us our x, our displacement. And that displacement is proportional to the force applied to it. We are hanging um, a weight on the spring. The weight is a force. So the greater the weight, the greater the extension, right? So we see greater stretching with greater weight applied to it. We can also imagine if we would remove those weights, the restoring force would pull it back equal and opposite to the ex to the applied force. So they're kind of related to each other in that way. That also kind of makes sense as to why we use a negative number when we are looking at the formula for Hooke's law, right? 
because this is a restoring force. It's pulling it back. So that's why it's a negative, because remember that negative indicates directionality, not value, not, not it's not like we owe something. We're not looking at it as having a deficit in quantity here. This is just a vector, so that's indicating directionality, that it's putting it back, it's restoring it. And that's why we use the negative number in the equation for Hooke's Law. Um, going on, as you move forward here, they just give you some examples to work through and stuff like that. We have another set of vocab, pretty much the same words. They, they add a few here, like elastic and vector, but for the most part, the same vocab. Um, and then they talk about this interactive that you can play with a little bit. This is on a website known as FET. P-H-E-T, from the University of Colorado Boulder. They have a fantastic variety of different simulations that all are science-based. A lot of them are physics. They've got chemistry and biology and earth science as well. It's pretty cool. This one helps you to kind of play with the different factors, the spring constant, the applied force, and that kind of stuff. This, this is weird to me, though. You click on this link, and what it's going to do is it's going to actually take you just to this home screen, which Okay, that's not very helpful. So what you're going to want to do is you're, you're going to want to go to, um, I go to physics, because this is a physics sim. And then you're going to go down here and you're going to find Hooke's Law. And that's the sim that you want. Now I already have this loaded over here. So I'm going to bring that over. And this is what it looks like. And this is what you can play with. There's nothing for you at this, at this time to turn in here. This is just for you to kind of play with restoring forces and um, spring constants, your applied forces. <clears throat> you can put in the spring force here. We can actually see it. Um, you can put in the displacement here as well. Um, so we can apply a force here, right? And it's going to kind of show us those vectors and notice that they are equal and opposite to each other our displacement and our spring force, right? And we can um, change the spring constant too. If we have a greater spring constant, then we're not gonna get as great of a stretch to the spring because we would expect that. We're, we're still pulling with the same amount of force, but we're not able to stretch the spring as much. If we have a lower spring constant, then whoa, that spring gets really stretchy. You can experiment with multiple springs, compare them side by side if you want to. Um, you can mark that equilibrium position so you know like how much the spring has stretched. So it's just kind of a nice way to be able to see this without having to have springs on your kitchen table at home. Okay, so there'll be a couple portfolios that you'll do throughout the school year here in physics where you're going to have to have a couple small objects to play with at home. I expect that you'll be able to gather those objects, really nothing out of the ordinary. And there's lots of things you can kind of substitute to make it work. Um, but when it comes to things like springs and, and various other objects that you may not be able to access at home, then we'll be looking at sims for those instead. All right, so that is pretty much the end of this lesson. If you have any questions, let me know. That's Hooke's Law. That's looking at you know, applied force and your spring force or your restoring force, looking at what the spring constant is. This is not going to go away. We're going to be using this when we get to energy as well because elastic potential and um, elastic Energy is a type of energy that, you know, we're going to have to look into in more detail. And when you do that, you'll be using Hooke's Law. So um, that's it for me, ladies and gentlemen. Have a great rest of your day. If you have any questions, let me know, and I'll see you in the next video.